one. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It is your Cape Crusader, Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with our brand new friend, Craig Holland. We're going to be breaking down his indie comic, Our Adventure with Court Mascot, and everything in between. Craig, welcome to the stream. How are you doing tonight, man? Doing pretty well, man. How are you? I, I am fantastic. I had a chance to read some of the preview pages for this, and it was a blast to the past. I love it. Uh, I'm excited, man. Uh, what do like drove you into indie comics you know what was your first like initial like step into uh creating everything uh just like indie comics in general or yeah uh, yes sir let, let, let's begin with the very start of it uh so basically you know i went to college for illustration and i graduated about eight years ago and um even before that i was a kid there was one comic i loved where uh it was Spy amazing spider-man 375 where i picked it up and i'm like i was just flabbergasted like how did somebody draw this this is amazing and then flash forward a few years later, we're about to go to college. And my brother, he's like, oh, you know, you want to do comics. He gave me a documentary about you know going into comics. And like just it was maybe like 2009, 2010. I had like all the bigs at the time, like Marcus Vestry, maybe Jim Lee. And they talked about doing indie comics. And this is like, you know, well before Kickstarter, all that. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, it's a bit of a gamble. You never know what could happen. Like all these artists are saying the same thing. And then one guy goes, oh, then these two guys with a $1,500 tax refund. They made this little comic called Ninja Turtles and it, you know, blew the hell up. So, and I'm just like, all right, I have good faith. This is going to be where I want to go now. So. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've actually heard the very, the, like the root of the story. Like, uh, so they, they really created Ninja Turtles off of a tax return check. It was something like it's, I've heard variations of it. It was something like the two guys, like Pete, Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird. Some stores to say it was a, like earlier on, it was a full like $1,500 refund. Wow. Some say it was part of it. And then like, I think a loan from like Kevin Eastman's uncle or something like that. So it was one of those like a hodgepodge of like, they got money from a few different sources to like mm -hmm. fund this. And it's like, it just kind of evolved into this enormous franchise. So it's kind of, kind of hilarious how that stuff kind of works out. Yeah. Yeah. No. And th th that's cool too. Uh, th to think that it was, all it took was that amount of money to create that, you know, that's pretty inspiring. Oh yeah, I and mean, like I keep hearing like you know over time like oh yeah like they they sold out of their first first issue when they went to like this little they're it started in New Hampshire and I'm from New Hampshire I live mm -hmm. in Maine currently like oh yeah Portsmouth Comic Con and I'm like it doesn't even exist anymore but it's funny like like there's some days where like, I sell a few issues of any of my books and it's like oh they sold out I'm like different times we live in so yeah yeah I mean. I, I don't know though. I mean, you know, is it really selling out like to achieve what they consider their dreams? Oh no, no. I meant like they sold like they had like all the issues they printed like. That oh, very... I thought you meant like the creators themselves. I was no, like, no, 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 no. I didn't mean like that. I meant I meant more like the like, the first show they did. They sold out of all the issues that they. Yeah, had. My, my my apologies for the misunderstanding. No, no, no. That 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 is huge though. You said that was at a, a con from your area. Yeah, it was. I guess it like. It was important. Like I see, like all oh, Portsmouth Comic Con, and mm -hmm. I don't think it exists anymore. But it's just funny. Like okay, like maybe like forty minutes away is where like it all started. That these two guys had this really dumb idea or fun idea, and they just kind of did as a joke. And it's like, oh hey, they sold out all their issues. So. Yeah, it's because it's it's a crazy concept to think about it. Ninja Turtles, like as as a whole, just thinking like without thinking of the actual design, like it's crazy. So oh, God, I mean, yeah. it's very possible. So that's like what drove you to begin your journey. Yeah, just kind of like. Because I love, it's even funnier because a few years later, the IDW rebooted the Ninja Turtles. And at my art school at the time, there really wasn't much focus on comics. You basically could be like an editorial illustrator or a children's book illustrator. There wasn't much, it, it was a bit, I don't want to say narrow, but it was like there, like years after I left, it became more broad. But I saw the reboot of the issue, like um, issue one, I saw on the comic book shelf. I'm like, and I kept reading it over and over. I'm like, I want to do this. And then. I kept going down the rabbit hole of like finding like the mask like jim carrey's the mask was based off a comic book back in the day like i started reading hellboy i started reading like all these other really weird like just outside like marvel dc like all like mm -hmm. these very like obscure things where i'm like oh my god this is like it, you can do anything with comics really yeah comics seems like just this really like vast medium where you know if you go to create a film there's so much in production like just hiring so many different moving parts, but with a comic, you really limit yourself down to like an artist letterer, you know, yourself as a writer, uh, and whatever, you know, other small pieces you want to add. Uh, and you could really just go anywhere your mind desires. What was your first venture? Like your very first book? Uh, what was the, the, you know, the title of it, uh, the concept of it? And then I guess some of the creative process. 
funny you mention that. Oh, I got it over here. Over here. <laughs> so this is actually my first book called Color Me Reggie. It's a coloring comic book. So basically you fill in the dialogue. I don't know if you can see, color the panels, make them mm -hmm. say whatever you want to. Kind of like a Mad Libs meets like a, like, you know, a coloring book. Yeah, no, that's you a really cool concept. Thank you. Yeah. So basically the way, so I started doing conventions back in like 2016. So I kept like doing fan, like I started like getting my feet wet. I'm like, I want to do a comic, but I don't know what to do. And I had this character named Reggie, who it's a guy, he gets a ring. He turns into like a six foot frog. His tongue turns on whatever he wants it to. And I'm trying to think. Um, and it was kind of like, I want to do a story, like a book with him, but mm -hmm. I don't know like what to do, where to start. And I'm like doing fan art, but I'm like, I know like after a time, like it's going to just, I, I feel like having a book in the long run is going to help me. Mm -hmm. And then someone, you know, like I'm trying to think, you know, when people suggest things like, and they just nine out of 10 times, they don't apply to whatever you're doing. There's that one where someone goes, you know what you should do? I'm like, why? And they say, you should do a coloring comic book. I'm like, that's a good idea. Yeah, it and clicks then, um, and you're just like, dude, where has this idea been? Right? And then, um, <laughs> and then, uh, like, I did the, the whole, like, uh, like the dialogue thing where you fill it in because that's how I kind of wrote comics. Like, I, I always, I'm a stickler for dialogue in, like, movies and comics mm -hmm. where, like, okay, that's cheesy. That's, I always, because I did improv in college where I'm like, okay, what would I say in this very moment? Like, the first thing. And I just leave, like, I have a general idea of how the story's going to go, but it's like, like, first thing, what's, what am I going to say? And that's kind of how I did that. I funded that on Kickstarter back in 2017. Yeah, like like summer 2017 around that mm -hmm. time. So it was it was surreal. It was definitely kind of a, definitely a learning curve. Like okay, I, I could say that I really love the idea of you uh, not knowing where you wanted to go with the story, and then you're like essentially like you know what? Let's let the reader decide for themselves. Like let's them yeah. let let them create it. Uh, what, is there any plans on maybe doing like a second issue or a continuation of maybe some sort of like story that you create or is that kind of just something that's on that, that it's like its own project uh maybe so like this is something like i want to do like a second part but like mm -hmm. um i had like an idea for a story where like of that character where it's like a full like a fledged comic book but i actually did that in 2015 but i was kind of working long hours at a job and i was just i was commuting a long time to and from work i was getting tired and when i did finish i was like I just wasn't happy with it. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I can do better. And it's kind of, that's something like always in the back burner. Like I want to kind of revisit this character and, and then I'm like, oh, I like, I have this idea for a story and it gets bigger and bigger. I'm like, I got to contain it. And then that's why I did court mask. <laughs> like, okay. It's isolated. I can just keep it to one for now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what, what came next for you then? Uh, after color me Reggie, what was your next step in your creative process? So I'm trying to think 2017. So 20, so after I had that book funded, so I, court mascot was actually an idea I had in college where um it was based off a slam poem i did and then i took an it was an illustration class i took was called series where it's like you have one project we do multiple like you do more than one illustration kind mm -hmm. of like within that like like one project was like a, a magazine cover and like three spot illustrations or something like that and then the last project could be whatever you want as long as it's five pieces and I adapted that into that, that initial slam poem into like a five page comic book. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And it was, um, it's, a, it was obviously a lot different. It's funny. Cause if I can, if I can find the photos or the drawings, it looks like, um, do you remember like a Mega Man, the box art cover from like one and two? Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it kind of, it's kind of funny. Cause like it, it kind of resembled him in a way where I'm like, not even, like it, obviously the army was kind of a robot, but it was mm -hmm. just funny how like, Okay, I intentionally made him look like that. It's kind of amazing, but um, I always had that in the back of my head. And then I was at, I was bored at a convention one day. Like it was just really slow. It was it was like right around Fourth of July. And nobody was going to go to this convention. And um, I had this idea. I'm like, okay, what if I reveal this, this character? And then I just like brought a notebook. I just kept writing down like a whole outline. Then I kind of broke that down. And 2018, I started drawing it. And then. And it's about 60 pages long. So like, I kind of did that from 2018 to like summer 2020, which a good like part three, which each page is about 20 to 22 pages. Okay. I did like all, like I, I wrote it out first and then I drew inked and colored the third part within the, the six month, six week period. I was in furlough back when the pandemic hit. So, it so was, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh yeah. So it was basically, I, I had nothing to do. We're all at home. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to finish this guy like once and for all. 
So what's that, what, what does the process of creating this comic look like for you being, you know, the, the person who does everything, you know, uh, from, I guess, like right when you started to, uh, to drawing it out on, on the pages. So what works for me is, um, I like start with a very like loose outline, like, okay, like X, Y, Z happens. And then I kind of like, like it doesn't, no page count, no panel count, no nothing. And then I kind of like refine it a little bit where it's like, okay, like how can I, take all this put into like 20 24 pages mm -hmm. and then once i have like a good idea what i do is um i take like you know a little sketchbook and i kind of do little thumbnails where it's like okay like what would each page look like i don't think i've had my notebook sketchbook with me but and then what i do after that is um i pencil like i do in sections i do like 20 pages at a time i sketch like a full-on pencil sketch of each page and then once it's all done i go to ink and i, I break it into steps because that helps me like okay I can kind of measure like what progress I'm at. And I then like when the like step all... idea. Yeah, so it's not like, oh my god, this big overwhelming project. It's just I take it in baby steps. Yeah, and then plus you get the uh the dose of gratification too, like knocking off, you know, step one, step two. Uh yeah, I like that. Like dividing it up uh, in chunks like that. That sounds like it's a lot more digestible. Yeah, and then there's um this artist I follow, Ben Bishop, who uh He's done, he's done stuff for the Ninja Turtles. He's done like his own indie comics. And I think at one point, I can't remember which book it was. He actually had an Excel sheet where he has like all the page numbers and like what's been penciled, what's been inked, what's been colored. Or I don't think he was coloring that book, but I think he had someone else do it. But he like what he do, does is just he highlights it out when it's like, OK, I penciled it, cross it off, ink, cross it off. So that way it's just you can actually see, like, OK, I'm making steps toward. Like, yeah. Yeah. I like that too that 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 I you know I I'm always a big believer in like stuff like that maybe it's you know being like OCD with like organization but like it's just something you know clicks when it's just like nicely grouped together oh yeah <laughs> where it's it's yeah like you just it's more like digestible it's basically mm -hmm. like okay like I it's like I can actually do this I can take this in like steps I don't have to like just blow myself out doing it like three three days straight it's like okay no I can just two hours here i do this an hour here i do that so it's it's not like too overwhelming so what would you say is the most difficult part of doing this you know by yourself which would you say is the hardest part uh to complete um being the writer creator you know colorist all that um i mean the big thing is just finding time because there are times where thankfully like during the process i brought i bought a surface pro so i can do artwork on the go Ooh, that must be nice a, yeah, it, it makes it a lot easier. Although there was a point where I couldn't remember which file was where. So I'm like going through my desktop and my tab. Like, where is this? Where is this one page in between 21 and 23? Like, what the hell? But um, I think the big thing for me is time or like, because like I was in a long distance relationship before we moved in together. I'd go to conventions and like I would like, you know, cup hour, two hour driving that takes time away. Mm -hmm. Just time is probably the big thing and just I, i'm trying to think what else um that, yeah i'd say the time is probably the big thing where i can like just kind of pace myself but if it's something where like again i'm like gone for the weekend or other things come up where i'm like oh crap i can't work on this right now so we have a uh, dr hino uh, 419 over on youtube stopping and say hey uh, stop uh, sorry for taking so long not a problem thank you for stopping in if you have any questions for craig feel free to ask away in the chat so uh, what have you done any special classes or like seminars or any anything to help like hone your craft um so i did get i actually went to art school back in like i started in 2014 graduating mm -hmm. 20 i'm sorry 2010 to 2014 uh so basically I went in for illustration so a lot of like it, it over the years it's changed like it got a little bit more broad but at the time it's more fine art space where you know like you do refined drawing skills you do like they really push oil painting which I, I don't hate it for what it is, but it's one of those like, okay, I need to do like ink and other things, but <laughs> it did teach me like form and color and it did help mm -hmm. me in the long run. Like there was like, as you get like throughout the years, you do like a figure drawing, figure painting. Um, you do like other types of illustration classes. Like one, one I did like a sci-fi fancy one at one point. I did um, a couple of digital illustration classes. Those mm -hmm. are for the time new. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any other uh oh the, like the last semester i took this really everybody who saw it was like okay you you have to take this it's an ink and color class where it's just they didn't i won't say they didn't want us to ink but it's like, okay a class for just for inking mm -hmm. and just for color 
which mostly was watercolor and i'm like this oh, this is like right on my ass <laughs> We have uh, Dr. Hino419 uh, asking, what is this comic about? So yeah, let's go ahead and start breaking down, I guess, the uh, concept and uh, the idea behind it. All right, so this is my book. So Our Adventure of Corp Court Mascot. So basically, as I mentioned, it started from a slam poem I had, but it's about, um, so there's a character named Court Mascot who, you know, it's the early 90s, this kid, he gets a console and it comes with a packing game and he's the packing game. And it's kind of like a Mario, you know, Zelda or... Um, like Link, Mega Man, so on and so forth. And basically, like the first, it's in three parts. The first part is like the kid gets it, and like the, they become best friends. He's playing the mm -hmm. game all the time. He's like just go cruising through the levels and he's getting other games for the console. And then the second part is he gets older and or the, the player gets older and he goes onto a new console that's not backwards compatible. So he's playing I love him it. less. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's playing him less and less. And then as like time goes on, he, he started playing him less. He gets older. He ends up going to college. So it's kind of like Toy Story meets Wreck-It Ralph in a way. Mm -hmm. Where it's like this coming of age story where the, kid, the character is like, is he going to come back to play with me? Like, is there something wrong with me? Like, he's like holding out this optimism where it gets more and more bleak for him. It's, and it's kind of like, um, a lot of it came to where like, I'm at conventions too. And I see people who are with their kids and they're like, oh, like, you know, they're like, you know, 40, whatever. And they're with mm -hmm. like their nine-year-old kid. Like, hey, I grew up with, they pointed at my drawing, like, hey, that's Darkwing Duck. I grew up with him. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. You think, like, we're at that point where a lot of the things are coming back full circle. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's uh, it's so weird. It's, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I watched Lightyear with my children. And I was uh, their age when the first Toy Story came out. So, like, to watch it with them at that age and to be old, you know, it's like it's like surreal almost, you know? Oh god, I think um I did that with Toy Story 4. I'm like, oh my god, I remember being in the theater for the first one. I'm like, this is so surreal. Which was uh the, th the third one's like when they embrace dying, and I was like, oh my god, Toy Story, chill. Like when they're getting ready to be incinerated and they just hold hands, and it's like, you're not supposed to do that. Toy Story, <laughs> I'm not ready for this. <laughs> so yeah, I you mentioned this was uh driven from a slam poetry. Is there any like deeper like metaphor behind it? Um, so it's, I mean, this, this story is much different than what this, I mean, not much different, but I remember the slam poem was kind of I'm trying to think. It was basically like, it was because it was a lot shorter. It was basically mm -hmm. the kid. He's like at a college age now. Like I was around the same age. I think the kid was, and he like picks up this whole console and like, I'm trying to remember. It was basically like a lot of the jokes were like, you know, he's riding his pet dinosaur and it's like, he's not really like. I should have I should have read it before I uh, came on here, but it's <laughs> like the joke is kind of like, oh yeah, like it's gonna be so different. And then like he ends up, you know, falling in the same platforms. He ends up getting injured, and like, like you see the kid, like, oh this this game doesn't work. And then like you see like the actual video game character, like mm -hmm. in a cast, like, what are you doing? Like, how can you not avoid this? It's just so easy. So would you say like getting involved with, like slam, slam poetry like kind of helped you like? script better or write better like did that have like an influence on your writing at all yeah so i i, I kind of take like a different few different things one thing that's helped me writing like right now i'm reading a book called story by robert mckee mm -hmm. who's like a screenwriter i think the book is about 20 ish years old but it, it breaks down story and kind of breaking things like you know like like um like beats and like what drives a good plot forward and then um other things that help me too just reading i mean that's kind of you kind of like pick up on things you like you don't like like i read books or a comics i mean even watching movies help me for better or worse and how to like be concise where it's like okay i'm a big believer in like you know not a big believer but like i get i grow when i see a movie that's like three hours long now like nowadays before it was like okay like this is a special movie now it's like do we really need you know sonic the hedgehog to be like three hours and 45 minutes come on yeah yeah no i get that i get that and uh it's it's like movies are getting longer and longer it's like we like what happened to the movies that were like an hour long maybe hour 20 minutes you're yeah. in and out uh still have your day left like anymore i go to the theaters with my kids and you know it's nighttime by the time we get out <laughs> I, I read an interesting article about that where um the reason that happens is because uh, like what the, what the end result is with movies like you know for like decades from like the 60s and the 90s like movies were just going on VHS, so there was like a limit to how long they can be. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of movies were like hour and a half, two hour long. That makes a lot of sense. I never considered that. 
and then movies you know started going on dvd so they're getting a little longer there's a little bit more space and then they said avatar was the movie where like oh they made this big epic and and then and then they mentioned too like how movies on streaming there's really no limit so that's why like content's getting longer and longer mm -hmm. where i'm like okay like some of it i didn't agree with but like most of it i was like okay that makes a lot of sense for a lot of it like the that like especially with like the end result where now it's streaming there's like at least on our end, there's no like reason you can't have, like a four hour movie. Yeah, yeah, and um, dude, do you guys remember DVDs when they first dropped? They were like sixty bucks a disc. Oh, like I remember like getting VHS from like movie theaters and everything uh, when I was mm. younger. And then when DVDs first came out, like Fast and the Furious, I remember it was like a forty to sixty dollar movie on DVD. Oh, <laughs> and now um, you go to like any like discount bin and like the original ones it's like 4.99 yeah right. we have a uh, dr hino 419 saying i'm all for detailed movies unless they're terrible i am too uh <laughs> i just feel like we get so much filler i feel like a lot of movies just have so much that oh, yeah. it doesn't need uh but then again i'm not a director so i don't know uh yeah but let's get back to uh the comic so real quick right. with the with the slam poetry and with the comic you know what was your inspiration for like a video game based character like this is a this is a pretty unique concept so i like the idea of it i know for myself you know we were talking a little bit earlier like we're both retro gamers too um when you go to play that game again it doesn't hit as good as it does the first time you almost like you play it like just like i guess to get that feel good feeling yeah. but it's they don't it doesn't look good nine times out of ten it doesn't play good unless it's like a, a like rpg or something like right outside of, outside of that it's like hard to digest so like what was uh, i guess your inspiration to do this type of storyline I mean, it was partly for me because I like I said the idea came when I was in college. Like I was getting into retro gaming at the time. I think like like Super Nintendo. I think because at the time in college I started like doing like my Game Boy, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, like what would like be like revisiting like your childhood kind of thing. And then like I'm watching like all the video game YouTubers like AVGN, like uh, ha Happy Video Game Nerd, like all those guys. And like as I'm getting older, I'm like finding things I wouldn't even know I would have I never had the chance to and like like I started collecting with the Dreamcast I was a big Dreamcast fan like after once I finally got one a couple of years ago but like finding like odd things and just hearing odd stories about like the development mm -hmm. and just like like okay I appreciate this I wish like I knew more like I wish I knew this more at the time you know what I mean because there are games I'm like oh I wish I knew this as a kid I'm trying to think of one off the top of my oh yeah. um Fantasy Star Online was like one of the first like Dr Sega Dreamcast games I played and I remember being like awestruck by it oh god completely blew me away it was gorgeous oh, especially for the time yeah yeah it was like groundbreaking i think it was like one of the few games you could play online too right uh probably on console at the time yeah that yeah yeah dude just mind-blowing so or oh, go ahead oh, i'm sorry i think for me like i remember my big like video game like because people because i listen to po other podcasts too where they talk about older games and they're a little bit older so like, i get like different perspective but there is one for me it was probably sonic adventure like i went to a friend's house he had a Dreamcast, and I'm like, oh my, like I want only, I have a weird relationship with Sonic, where it's like, I play the games later on, but I watch like the cartoons, the comics, mm -hmm. all that. I did the opposite, where you do it the other way around. I'm like, yeah, oh wait, yeah. he actually has a video game. I played Sonic Adventure. I'm like moving him around. I'm like, what is this? Like I'm moving <laughs> in a 3D space, and then I was like, and then like of course the Dreamcast went away. I'm like, where, where is it? This is awesome. I remember what was another good one, Gex uh oh, enter the gecko yeah dude uh but see i was more of a n64 gamer uh unfortunately yeah. uh well not unfortunately but i i just i couldn't afford this the dreamcast like that i remember yeah. that just oh, being no. like like top shelf back in the day when i was a kid I, um I, I actually did have an n64 i still do actually but i didn't get the dreamcast to like it was kind of one of those things where like i didn't get it till i was at a flea market years like maybe five a years novelty and like a novelty yeah, just kind of like I found one where it was actually working, and then I just started collecting things here and there, and then got a little small little collection. I'm like, oh hey, let's play Crazy <laughs> Tax here. Let's play. Uh... Oh, God, Such so... a good game too. Oh, God, so addicting. So, real quick, uh, we have the opportunity to dive into the first yeah. couple of preview pages, but first. For anyone that reads this, you said this was like a coming of age comic. So what is the type of feeling do you hope that your readers get when they read this book and they walk away from it? Um, so if it's like a younger person, probably the, like a, like a happy story, like, oh yeah, like not happy, but or like a feel good story. Like if they're older, like probably like our age and older, it's more like, a, oh, I get this. Like, I kind of want to do it from like two perspectives. One where it's like a kid, like, oh yeah, like a straightforward story. Then mm -hmm. the adult is kind of like, oh, I get this. Like, I remember like being a little kid and like, you know, playing these games or doing these things. And as I got older, I kind of forgot about it. And then, 
and like you know fast forward when they're college after college it's like all like kind of like more like a looking back like kind of reflecting mm-hmm. their life kind of thing so I, I i know it's way too deep for a game book about oh, video games, i think that's so. awesome uh it's it's depressing to think like a playstation one came out what 25 years ago oh, God. Like, like that's like it's it's I, i'm showing my age here but like i remember getting that when it launched too. need for speed valley uh valley car racing and final fantasy 7 like and I was a kid, and uh, like, dude, that was my first introduction to RPGs. It was beautiful. But enough of the video game talk. Let's actually Sorry. check out a comic about it, uh, and we're gonna check out this preview. So- okay, so you're able to see it, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the first first few pages. So the page on the left is, you know, like that birthday where it's like a very odd snowstorm, and he like wraps, opens his, like he opens up his present. And he sees like it's the Exodus twenty four, which is a. Uh, kind of a joke behind it we were um a lot of the names had to do with sega so like the exodus the genesis mm-hmm. the 24 was like um paying homage to the um turbo graphics 16 okay. which is the obscure number on there and so you can see like uh like the rap see if we can zoom in maybe not you remember the uh what was it the sega x32 the adapter you could uh plug into the top of the sega and like there was like what like the star wars game you could play on it right uh, yeah i think <laughs> there was some weird stuff you can play on that like yeah it was basically they couldn't quite do a 32-bit system yet they're like hey let's just throw this on there mm-hmm. but yeah so uh first you pay, do you want me to just kind of like scr- yeah go ahead through? go ahead yeah 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 and then the next page couple next page is just you know him like actually booting up the uh booting up the game of course the vcr's in the background and you actually see his world and like oh nothing can be too much for us and then you see like actually him like running like oh we're gonna clear this path path no problem then it's like and you fall right through so you said this was uh like based off of a mega man game um so the character is kind of based off like th- i'm a big mega man fan but kind of like mega man punch out um little mac from punch out and uh mario so you can kind of see like the three like the yeah or, yeah. yeah like the like the blue class working with the helmet the boxing gloves and obviously being a robot so mm-hmm. And then um, you see like going, there's actually this fourth page, the one with the tentacles. I had this hardest time trying to think like, cause it was just basically like a montage of him like just going through the game. I'm like, mm-hmm. and it was basically to the point where I'm getting done with the first part of the book where I'm like, I got to put something there. And then I got the idea of like the, where he's like trying to fight like these tentacles. He's like on the, the little monkey bars. I'm like, I really like how you had the monkey bars tied into the panels too like that was it was it's pretty interesting design especially like for not having a lot of books like under your belt like it like did you what like did you use as reference or inspiration for that i always like looking at kind of obscure like uh like when i read other comics like other kind of trippy things people do like with um like like the sequential art like one that kind Mm -hmm. of at least for me like i have friends who mentioned stuff too but one was for me was uh have you read watchmen yeah yeah there was like one shot where it's like a, the night owl where it shows like his cave or okay yeah cave. yeah yeah and it's like if you didn't take if you just it's like a long shot if you didn't like i think what they did or dave gibbons was he cut it into like three panels and it's just literally one of those things where like you don't like oh my god that blew my mind so like kind of using that to your advantage and i had a friend who um he said there was a batman comic i i don't think he ever showed me it but like he talked about how like um there was a panel where like i think batman has cape out and like there were panels inside of his cape that's so far yeah so one of my favorite things i've seen was it, it was a nightwing it was a recent nightwing issue where the whole entire book is one big panel oh wow so it's like the way they drew it out like i don't know how they did it but you can line up all the pages and it's just one big panel uh, and it was, sweet. it was, yeah, dude, it's, it, it, it blows my mind. Uh, it's, so I, I always love seeing this cause like I can't draw to save my life. So seeing stuff like this is it's, you know, and learning the creative process behind it's always really awesome. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, let's go there. It's funny. Um, one kind of small back in college, there was a project we did where, um, we were in Manchester, New Hampshire. And basically there are these banners that like every year they would like pick and it, like a student's work and they have it mm-hmm. on the band. Like, five different designs and what i did was um there's a park where i had like it was one big scene where like all these little manchester landmarks like uh like a local hockey team like you know all interacting in this one park and what i did was i cut into like five different illustrations mm-hmm. and so like by them you see i had to look for it but basically you know by itself it's like like you know woman at a park you know hockey player but like you put them all together it's kind of like um you know that x-men cover where it's like jim lee and he, like 
five different issues but if you put them all together it makes one like ginormous issue oh yeah 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 I, that was kind of my inspiration where i'm like okay like by itself it's one thing but it's like, oh there's a bigger picture involved that is so cool so uh what was it there was a batman death metal where they introduced each of the uh the justice league going up against its counterpart of uh the batman variation of it the evil batman variation and you could put all four covers together and it makes one big thing like that too I love stuff like that. It's yeah, like, it's so cool. It is so cool because, like the way the way it's like its own thing. And then I think all the, the um, there was a uh, Suicide Squad, Teen Titan, and uh, I forgot what else. But there was a Titan where the world, uh, the war for world or the war for Earth three. There it is. Uh, it was like part one, two, three, four, and five where it did the same thing where they all like put it together. Nice. That's I love stuff. It's it's yeah, it's definitely kind of like it. it it's not even just like oh this is a cool image it's like oh wait i can kind of like mix and match and like mm -hmm. kind of make it one bigger issue it's like it's kind of like um like the megazord where it's like, oh, like these little robots like no they make a bigger robot in the end oh man I, I feel like we could just literally talk for hours about old school you're just name dropping things left and right i'm like oh my god this is a blast from the past so what are we seeing here i see the Mega Man influence with the the arm blowing off right there right, uh, yeah. but what, what else are we seeing in these panels so this is kind of like another montage so like as he gets better he's actually being other bosses like the pharaoh uh so a fun fact a lot of these characters like the other characters are from uh whenever i did inktober like a drop like do you know what inktober is mm -hmm. so basically that was like a drawing i did like you know i think one year i tried to do i think it was the last year i did it because i just couldn't keep up for uh i did daily characters and like the one with the like the little hose he was like a vacuum cleaner robot you know the other one's like a bubble gum machine robot and i just i do really weird random stuff like that where i'm like i'm just gonna throw it in there and just mm -hmm. see if anybody picks up on it no that is awesome that's awesome and then, gets, and then it gets to a point where like oh you don't even need the study guy anymore you just go on to the next you can just go on the levels without any issues um and then it kind of goes into like his relationship where like the kids his mom is like oh go outside and like why do you like i don't get why you need to go outside you're already sweating whenever you play our adventure and then another scene where uh, like the kid is having like not doing well in school and he mm -hmm. just kind of uses the video game as kind of like a kind of like a relief and no, I, like I remember those days too uh not ever going outside just spending all day gaming and everything uh and and <laughs> the school stuff too yeah yeah i'm just like the little things the little s where it's like uh that whatever that s was i don't know why we all drew it but like that ah, like the superman those, s Oh yeah, with the um, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm mean, like just yeah, just you do what, the, the six lines and then the uh... oh god, yeah. Those, <clears throat> and I, I I learned recently there's another step where you actually make it 3D where you kind of yeah. do it. Where I'm like, I didn't like my school didn't know that. Then I did it in front of someone. I'm like, whoa, we can do that, dude. You remember making like cootie catchers for the first time? The little finger. I I could never. I had to always have someone fold it for me. Uh, but the thing where you like open it and then you like. Yeah, dude. yeah, where you like you like guess a like color <laughs> then a number and mm -hmm. I love writing the fortunes, but I can never figure out how to do the yeah. I'm, I'm the same with you. We can never figure out how to like um. Yeah, that and origami, the death of me, death of me. <laughs> oh god, I I think fourth grade we tried doing like origami stuff and I'm like, nope, not happening. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, but I have to go back, but uh, then this is uh the next couple pages where it's like oh like. You know when you play a game sometimes and you get to the point where you're just like finding all the collectibles like a spyro mm -hmm. or the crash bandicoot where it's like oh you find like all these random foods and some of them you kind of the joke where he's in front of the donut where it's like after the fact where it's like there's just one thing you couldn't find it's right there and um because i like i was actually playing deadpool recently where like i'm like going around loops for this last level I'm like where do i go and then I looked online like are oh, you supposed to go up to this one spot i'm like oh my god it's isn't right that the most that's the most annoyingest thing in the world too because it's like you pass that spot a thousand times and you never just look up you know yeah and it's like all those like those little missions like um when i play gta 4 there's that one infamous mission where all you have to do is check your email and leave the coffee shop yep and when i'm playing i'm like what am i supposed to do like i'm like going on the, the computer and I'm like what Man, I got two big pieces of news that are gonna make your day. So we're getting a uh, there's Mega Man. All the battle uh, networks are coming to the Switch. They're gonna be in two different volumes, and then we're rumored to get a GTA 4 remaster. Ooh, that'd be nice. Hopefully they nerf Roman though. I'm tired of him calling. You know, get give put his phone on silent. 
Oh, uh, God, but I'm really? about it. Like, I thought GTA 4 was better than 5. I mean, and I know that might be a hot take, but I, I like the story better, a lot better, you know? I've I've heard that, where I'm like, what the, like, which one's better? People say that 5 is more, like, you can just do whatever, but 4 has, like, a more cohesive, more focused story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the boats, or, the, you know, the cars, I, I call them boats because that's how they feel. Uh, the, the driving might be a little off, but it was an old game, you know? Obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was crazy. It's small side tangent where you know the GTA trilogy that the for the that came out like last oh, year. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Um, there's a person I follow on Twitter. I think it's like JP Switch Mania, where he like raffles off games. Where like, okay, if you retweet this, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you could win it. And then I did it for GTA trilogy. Where I'm like, okay, this is the only way I would get it because I've heard not good things about it. Where I'm like, I would only. I would only keep it if I win it. And then I get a message like weeks later, like, hey man, you won. What's your address? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, God, it's too funny. So, I man, how, how many retweets does he get on something like that? Hundreds? He gets a good amount. Yeah, I think I, depending what the game is, like, even if it's, like, let's say, even if it's GTA, I'm like, people still were like, hey, I want a free game. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I do a lot of Twitch streaming and I, I play all those games when they drop and they're, I mean, they're every bit of 60 bucks. So, oh, yeah. It was just, I think by now the games are probably like, I'm sure they did a lot of patches, but at the time I was like, again, I'm getting married this year. So I'm like, the budget's a little tight. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, if, if I win it, whatever. And I'm like, oh crap. Like it was kind of one of those things where like, I just kind of put it on my head. I'm like, oh, I actually won one for once. <laughs> no, it's, but, um, uh, it's a fun one. I, I, I mostly played it for Vice City, to be honest with you. I like San Andreas, but Vice City was the one that I played and, and resonated with the most, you know? Oh yeah. Same. I think that was probably my favorite too because um obviously you know we talked about ray liotta a little bit beforehand but um people are like oh good like when he passed away like oh good fellas good fellas and then i'm like i didn't see it till later on then i'm like wait he was tommy Frasetti. like oh yeah my god like it, it's weird like out of like all the original three gta games the only ones i did beat was vice city i beat that twice and san andreas i never even bothered to finish i just kind of messed around the entire time you know i like san andreas um yeah. it wasn't bad it's yeah, uh, just kind of too, too much to do. Yeah, I, 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 man, the territory wars. I, I like every sec. It's, it's almost as bad as like, uh, what was it? The settlement stuff in Fallout Four. Like every five seconds, you had a, a warning that you had to go like rescue your territory. So let's get back to the comic though. So, but we, I'm sorry, let's I really back. You're, you're, you're fine. You're fine. So what are we seeing on this second page though? Uh, the so, upgrade um, to the newer game. So basically, like it's kind of like you know it's. I kind of do the same in the book where it's like holiday or birthday where he, like the player gets other games where it's like, uh, at first it's just him in this other game. Uh, and then as time goes on, he gets other like friends where it's like a, one's like a, a barman homage. One's like a Star Fox Metroid homage. And then the other one is like a goalie kind of like inspired by NBA mm -hmm. jam to the next page. And then, um, then you're right. Then he gets like kind of sequel and it's like, Oh yeah, we get to go on more adventures, fight more bad guys. And then, uh, again, kind of going back to the Inktober thing, it's kind of threw in random characters like a, a like a like a school bus with a monster, and then <laughs> a kind of beetle frog hybrid, and then uh, kind of like a lizard inspired by King K. Rule. That's cool. You're able to like use those though, like recycle their designs and like bring them into your book. Yeah, someone I had a friend who was like, uh, oh, "God, keep all your sketchbooks because those are like your ideas later on." And I'm like, "Yes, that is so true." Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go on the next page. So, and then this is kind of the point where like uh, he's getting like spinoff games. Like you got is that the, Road uh, Rash? Yeah, like a Road Rash kind of excite like, bike kind of thing. And then uh, like the racing game. And then like oh hey, there's like a ra wrestling game. And then there's a, there's always that whenever you have a franchise, there's that one odd spinoff like Mario goes missing or like Mario Paint where it's like. And of course, I make a joke where it's like a chess game where it's like mm -hmm. who the hell wants to play a chess game. And I think one of the Mortal Kombat's like has like a chess game in it where like I was playing with my buddies in college and her his roommate walked in and was like, why are you why don't you play actual chess? And it's like you get to beat people up with this. Yeah, yeah, it's way different when it's virtual. Uh, there was a game. What was it? Tekken Tekken uh, tag team. Once you like beat it, you could unlock uh, bowling, bowling in it. And uh, the Tekken bowling was a lot of fun. I mean, we spent hours playing Tekken bowling. <laughs> It was so fun. It's funny. I think I remember I made it my goal to get a 300 in that game. I think I did with King. <laughs> you remember that, dude. I'm telling you, like, we're just on the same uh, the same uh, wavelength with uh, these old school games. Oh, God, it's 
I feel a connection right here. <laughs> um, see the next page. So then it gets kind of caught. The kid gets cocky and then he starts playing the game's blindfolded to not so great success. Where it's like he's slipping on banana peel. Mm-hmm. He's like going into fire. He's like, okay, let's uh, let's not do this. And then, and the next page, he gets kind of worried. Like, oh, he's taking me out, but like, oh, wait a minute. Um, but he'll come back to me eventually. Like he go kind of goes in cycles. He plays other games and such. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, like, of course, I did kind of like the the TNT character. Uh, next page. And uh, do you care if I just do like the first? Because we're almost to the first part. Yeah, again, you right? can show as much as you want. Figure this would be a good kind of like a teaser where it's the first mm-hmm. page, and then there's like a little more low key part where it's like uh, he the Scott has like his friends over, they all have dinner, and of course the goalie's like, no, I want more. He's he's a goalie, he's an athlete, he, got, he like wants all the food. So, mm-hmm. and then um, and I kind of made a joke too about how like uh, whenever like you went to the bathroom, you did a you pause the game, like we would take a breather too, like oh god, I can't keep up like this. Or uh, those nights when you didn't have a memory card, so you would pause it and, and keep it running like for three days straight, so that way oh, you could finish the game. <laughs> oh god! And like, you hope like nobody goes down, and, like kicks the yeah kicks yeah. Oh, I I hear another podcast where people are like, oh yeah, like uh, I didn't know uh, you needed a memory card for like the Saturn or whatever, and then they turn off and like they lose all their progress. Oh my god! My biggest thing was uh, so for like SNES games and stuff like uh, if it's like uh, so Final Fantasy three. I put days into that. Wow, we're talking like hours, like 60 hours plus. And when you're a kid, that that's a lot. And I didn't know there was a battery that the game saves to. So like that battery died on me and it wiped everything. And I had no idea. So I went to go play it again. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I could just do it again. And then it put a couple hours into it. And then it dies on me again. And I'm just like, at that point, throwing it at the wall. I'm like, I'm done. Oh, that's <laughs> and then and nowadays we just have like, you know, auto saves. And- mm-hmm. Like, I sometimes it's like, just as bad though like sometimes like you screw yourself and then it auto saves and then you gotta like redo the whole game oh god yeah you go too far and you can't go back and it's mm-hmm. just like uh, i think i had a game happen to me once where um i think it was bully where i think it glitched in the middle of the game and like i could not progress through the story it was like i couldn't find any missions and i'm like all right whatever i'm just gonna start over from scratch <laughs> um and then this is the last part of um this is the last part of the first part of the story so um, and go, so like each page, each like section has like its own cover art. Where mm-hmm. like uh, I love this cover for the second one in the world one two. That's so that's such an awesome nod. Yeah, and uh, so I had, like two artist friends. I reached out to a couple people, and this other guy Jesse. Um, I, I pretty much I gave two artists. One was Max. I can go back and show his illustration earlier. Um, for Jesse, I was like, okay, here's a story, and he's a little bit older than me. He's like, I got an idea, and I'm like, what is it? And he like showed me a sketch where it's like you know the old school Mega Man style box art, and he's just pounding through it. Mm-hmm. I'm like you sob, I love it. And I I, I was kind of curious too, I'm like how would other people draw my character? Like I'll just kind of go back quickly. So while you're scrolling through, uh, I think it's pretty funny too that uh, it was like it looks like it's modeled off a of PlayStation, but the cartridge is, is it looks like it's modeled off a of NES. And uh, there's actually like there's correlation too. So for a lot of people don't know this like this is also like a gaming podcast like keeping a geekly's comics and video games yeah. like it's geek culture uh so the super nintendo originally was supposed to have a disc drive and uh, super nintendo and sony couldn't agree on it so then sony broke off and that's how the playstation one was created oh god this is basically like yeah they're like giving seeds to their enemy and like dude it was so crazy like final fantasy 7 was originally supposed to be on the n64 can you imagine having like 10 cards for, oh, for uh, I actually, if you see right here, I got a, a cloud stand up. So like, I'm a huge uh, RPG uh, nerd when it comes to uh, things like that. Okay. So we have uh, Ichthys over on YouTube. Uh, stop it and say, what is up? Total excellence. Welcome uh, to the chat, Ichthys. How you doing, dude? Nice. So right there is uh, the cover for the first one. Yeah, like the first section where I had my buddy Max for same thing. I'm like, I gave him the book and I gave it to him digitally, like because I had it done mm-hmm. like may of 2020 and i'm like okay i'm gonna do a kickstarter like so like fall of 2021 i have time i'm like okay like i just sent it to people like do whatever you want he like gave me this idea where he had like stretch arms and i'm like and he has like a very like energetic like kind of like drawing style and i'm like mm-hmm. of, like i wish i did that instead of the the the, the uh the propeller arms but it's it's always uh, so nice to get that different perspective on it too 
Yeah, because it's always cool seeing like um, like other like trade paperbacks where you see like other artists do like uh, their own interpretation of the character where it's like it's slightly different in good ways where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, I want to thought drawing it like this or doing that. And um, I had a couple of people where like I wanted because I have a friend who does like folk art and he does like more not so much cartoony, but more hyper realistic stuff. Mm hmm. And he did like a series like years ago where like he took all like the Pokemon, like the original eight trainers, like their like their gym master in the Pokemon they use and like Oh, that's cool. Like sort of hyper realistic, like an in ink, and I'm like, Oh, I would love to see that. And we could it was kind of like a timing thing, but I'm like, I would love to see like my characters and his style and then mm-hmm. cause like one time he drew like a Ninja Turtle like in a hyper real he's like, I don't know if I like this. I'm like, dude, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I always love the people that kill it. Uh they're always like self like the most like self-critical about their work we have ick this over on youtube saying because of the breakup nintendo did a cd add-on for the 64 but it's exclusive to japan uh and then he also said cool character mascot as well okay (laughs) so this was a sneak peek there's uh three worlds to this though right you said there's three different parts yeah and so basically like the first part is where like you know the kind of a brief overview where it's like i can take an exit out of this so um basically like you know like the, they get together the second book part is where like uh he gets older he goes to other other consoles like the n60 an n64 type mm-hmm. i bought i can't get out of this let's see oh i i, I removed us at school okay. we're already yeah we're so, already uh, done just us oh just us okay mm-hmm. so like basically like, you know like that and then he gets older and then the third part i don't want to give too much away but it gets he gets even older and he like it's just kind of like relegated like what is going on right now like what is life it's just kind of like all empty box like boxes and moving mm-hmm. and stuff so so where can people... like it's one... oh go ahead sorry yeah it's basically because i'm like i was actually moving in part of the time where there's a part where you can see like a like a one of my old rooms like i lived in a different place like a couple years ago i lived in someone's house like you rent out rooms and it was like wait is that your old office i'm like yes <laughs> like i can tell it's your old setup with the two monitors i'm like shut up um is it go you ask me where to get so yeah up? where where can people uh find uh you know where to buy this at you know where is it all available to purchase so uh, if you go to bigcartel.com and you um if you look by my i can send you the link too like if you go by, look by my name c holland art or Holland art you can see i have a lit page where it has like uh like my call me reggie reggie book he has another book it has a couple things on there, but you can order from there. I mean, I have in my house. I just ship mm-hmm. from there. So, um, and, or you can just email me too, or if you want to reach out to me, DM like, hey, can I get a book? I'll like, hey, just send me like a PayPal, Venmo, whatever. And so, then uh, your website too, right? Yeah, if you go, that's actually easy. Go to my website. There's gonna be like a drop down to shop, and I'll bring you to my big cartel shop. Which, uh, for anyone that's interested, I do have all of his social media links as well as the the website for his actual his own personal website in the description below. If you're on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, if not, be sure to go to the YouTube or Facebook, check it out, and those will be in the description. So real quick, before we wrap things up, Craig, I want to ask you one question in particular. As much as this is a show to really promote your work, your book, and everything in between, um, it's also a nice little learning tool for anyone yeah. watching, you know, maybe they're first-time creators, first-time writers, first-time artists. So with that being said, for anyone that's kind of struggling just to get started on their own creative process, what type of advice would you give them to help them kind of push through that barrier? Um, Just one thing learn to take a t- constructive criticism criticism it does help you in the long run just keep practicing just keep doing a little bit every day like find a few things to work on try different things like uh like for example i mentioned earlier i take oil painting mm-hmm. not something i use now but it definitely helped me understand color and form a little bit better um I'm trying to think of anything else uh, sorry my cat's a little no you're fine on. you're fine i got i got two of them myself we got a little cat tent right there um uh, my, my one if i don't pet her she likes to come up and She'll actually put her paws on my headphones and yank them out of my ears. Oh, that's so that's so nice. <laughs> I have one where he doesn't like closed doors. So every time any doors close in the house, he just has to paw at it <laughs> at any hour. But um, um, another thing too, just ask other artists too. They, I mean, they were like that at one point. Like I go to went to conventions. I asked all the big artists or who were there. Like, hey, what do you recommend? Like, how do you get started? Um, like going online, talking to other like our communities, like on Facebook and such. YouTube's a good resource and just kind of like um just like slowly building from there and just experimenting really mm-hmm. like i like right now like, i didn't touch watercolor in the first time in four years and like oh, and like right now like this is stuff i'm doing so no i i seen those previews i love it too that's a uh, spongebob isn't it yeah it's man ray like yeah I just, yeah i've I mean, he's got little checks with little poodles on them so 
and yeah, it's just kind of like just have fun with it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's one of those things. If you don't have fun with it, I mean, you're doing something wrong. So yeah, absolutely. So uh, real quick before we wrap things up, what's next? You know, you know what's in the pipeline for you uh, coming up after this? Um, so a couple of things. I'm getting married in a month, so like art. Congratulations, sort of dude! Hold. Thank you. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a journey getting a house in 2020 and then getting married in like a month. So just want to. Once that's done, we have a web comic. My <laughs> fiance and I have an idea for where it's just us and our cats. That's, that's just awesome, though. Yeah, it's just something fun we're doing. We're just gonna we're gonna set up all social media pages for. Just we have all these ideas. Just kind of you know, it, it'll be fun for me right now because I'm doing a couple of test runs where it's gonna teach me about more about lettering. I'm like okay, I, like I have more time to experiment with this. Mm-hmm. And then another one off. I mean, I do want to do a follow up to this. Like I have an idea, but it's gonna be a few years down the line um because this is like 60 pages i think that's gonna probably be a little bit longer maybe like 80 something um probably expect that in maybe like four to five years and there's a one-off comic i have where it's called um it's a very odd title but it's called the banana man slayer <laughs> so small story behind that it's basically about a comic book artist who um he gets into fights with uh guys who go to conventions and has a banana costume in <laughs> and just <laughs> So fun, small story behind this. So I went to a convention years ago where our like one day was just on a Friday, it's super slow. Don't tell me it Nobody's actually happened. <laughs> no, it, 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 it thankfully it didn't because at the time I was like lifting weights and I'm like, it's so there was like one day, you know, it's just dead. And there's like this guy with steel maracas in this huge venue. We can hear him across the entire, like, oh my God, this guy won't shop. And I'm like, if he comes this way, I'm going to punch him. I'm going to like straight up punch him. And then like, of course, whenever he kind of came out of like the vicinity, like people just glared at me like, you're going to do it. And then um, I was watching Unsolved Mysteries at the time. And I watched like an episode about the son of Sam, like the whole cult thing. And I'm like, wait, what, what if there's, and I'm like bored drawing like all these different banana men. Like, wait, what if there's like a cult of banana men? Like, uh, like just ruining artists and conventions. And I'm like, oh God, I can't not draw this now. That's yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, banana man, if you're watching, uh, Hashtag F you for ruining that convention. Uh, but thank you for inspiring such a cool concept. I love that. Uh, so you're going to be working on something along those lines? Yeah. So um, I have it all like kind of written out and kind of thumbnailed, which is kind of the big thing for me is just time where I'm um, mm-hmm. like, like last year's, you know, getting into a house and kind of like the big thing last year is getting my book funded, like putting that on Kickstarter and then getting married this year. I'm like, okay, once like once it's all is calmed down, I can just focus on that and just get that because that's not going to take me too too long because i mean it's at a point now where like i know my rhythm and, and just, yeah. like, i kind of expect when it's going to be done it's just more the time and like the energy right now which is kind of like put it out elsewhere but those are my two big things is just on um, the web comic with us and our cats and then the banana man idea cool 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 well guys you heard it here we're gonna be wrapping things up craig i want to give you a big thank you for coming on breaking down this comic and everything in between it was such an awesome talk and uh, yeah man thank you so much thank you for having me it was a lot of fun you know absolutely absolutely and guys uh, everyone watching i hope you have a fantastic tuesday we have a couple interviews lined up for tomorrow and i'm hoping to get out a brand new podcast as well but uh as you said time is kind of a uh, invaluable resource for me and it's working against me so we'll see how much i have tomorrow um, with that being said though we are going to be wrapping it up and calling it a night i hope you guys all have a fantastic one but most importantly keep it geekly